who turned out of M&M, the National Party and the High Court in Wellington. Did the National Party breach copyright with their use of a piece of production music of the 2014 election campaign ad that sounded his palms are sweaty. strikingly like the Eminem song, Lose Yourself. Yes, says the High Court. The penalty is $600,000, which is arguably cheap, given it won an Academy Award. A Grammy Award went to number one in the US, stayed top 10 for 12 months and has sold roughly 12 million copies. But National argued they bought the production music in good faith, believing they were entitled to use it. They are now going after the people they bought it from. The High Courts, well, are not persuaded. Now, James Boyle is a professor of law and co-founder for the study of the public domain at Duke Law School. Public domain is what, is, is what this is all about. Today's High Court decision references his work, Theft, A History of Music, which is a comic that lays out 2,000 years of musical history in which he deals with the idea of borrowing music. It's available online. It's a really good watch. I asked him if he was remotely surprised by the High Court's decision. Well, you could take two points of view on this. On the one hand, you could say, of course, this is blindingly obvious. I mean, they called it Eminem-esque, or according to John Oliver, Eminem-esque, <laughs> which is his version of a New Zealand <laughs> accent. I, I, you can judge whether or not that's actually no, accurate. No, not bad, not um, bad. It had ex ex oh, thank you so much. Um, it had exactly the doom, 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 doom. I mean, this is exactly the same. Um, it's obviously aimed at the same thing. It's called after the same thing. And then they have the goal to come in and say, oh, no, this isn't copyright infringement. And you can see why um, uh, Eminem and Eight Mile Productions were uh, outraged. On the other hand, if you were the National Party, you might say, wait a minute. These are, first of all, just two courts. Dum, 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 dum. Since when does Eminem own those two chords? This is completely unoriginal. Copyright only covers original stuff. What's more, there's nothing in this that really rises to the level of creativity in what we took, not in the song as a whole, but in what we took. There's nothing convoluted in here like Eminem's famous mother's spaghetti. Rather, it's just this repetitive chord change and some rather uninspiring political advertising. So, you know, at worst, we're kind of bad hacks who make it clear that we bought a sound alike track we thought were licensed but we're certainly not copyright infringers copyright doesn't reach this far and if it does then it covers everything it covers the 12 bar blues it covers the 145 chord sequence it covers perfect fifths this is just a basic chord change so both sides had an argument Justice Carl wrote an extremely thoughtful opinion, which I've spent all of 25 minutes uh, dealing <laughs> with as an excellent legal academic. Um, it's really well done. It's really careful. Um, she makes a very good case. I'm not an expert in New Zealand copyright law. She makes a very good case. This is infringement. I have some quibbles, which I'd be happy to go over with you. I'm actually secretly delighted she cited our comic book on the history of musical borrowing that just made my day but it seems to me as is an unsurprising result but it wasn't that the national party didn't have an argument they did y yes and I, wa I want to come back to that because the national party paid forty eight hundred dollars to purchase production music now i have a sneaking suspicion that no one in the national party at that stage certainly who was involved in the purchase of this had any idea who Eminem was. So in good faith, they go to a production house, the production house says, hey, this is kind of zeitgeist stuff. And so they say, yep, we love it, we'll have it. Why isn't the production company being sued? Now, that's something as a matter of New Zealand law, collateral, vicarious liability, all kinds of things in which I have absolutely no expertise, um, possibly because they had an indemnity from the party, who knows. Um, I think the, the clearer example is they say, oh, come on, you bought a track called Eminem S and you're <laughs> claiming you didn't in, know it involved Eminem. That, that strikes me as a dog that doesn't hunt. I mean, that, that's, that's a ludicrous claim. Um, what instead I think they could have claimed and did claim is, look, we were told that this was just a sound alike track. And these are routine in the media business. People buy tracks. Give me one that sounds like a reggae track. Give me one that sounds like an old hard rock track. Vaguely Stones-ish, vaguely Beatles-ish, and people make a lot of money doing this. And the question is, how close to that line do you get to get? Yeah, I want to go back to you singing those two chords, because when you did those two chords, can you do them again? Because I don't want to ruin the program by doing them myself. Can, can you give us your two chords? It was beautiful. Dum, 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 <laughs> dum, 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 dum. So here's the problem, and here's, here's the one place where I might um, gently perhaps critique 
the court's opinion. So the court is very impressed by how much work was put in on all of this. And oh my goodness, they spent you know a year and a half figuring all this out, and they won all these awards, which shows how original it is. Now, that's, that last comment is just a non sequitur. I mean, take a perfect fifth. Dum 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 dum. Apologies to your listeners for my tone deafness, but um, most of you are sitting out there going, "Oh yeah, that's that um, that's that Steely Dan song, Ricky, don't lose that number." Except for those of you who are jazz fans and are going, "Oh yeah, that's that Horace Silver song, uh, a song from my father." Both of those won awards. Um, both of them used that interval, um, and the fact that they won awards doesn't mean that either of them owns dum 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 that's just a perfect fit that's a standard interval in music you don't get to own it the national party was trying to claim this was true on the other hand justice Carl rightly pointed out there were lots of other things in the composition the way that the guitar chords were played the way that it was accented subtle differentiation stress on the third beat all of which was designed very specifically to in the original and which the National Party copied. And she thought that was original enough to qualify for copyright protection under New Zealand law, and I have to defer to her on that. James Boyle, deferring to the High Court judge. Fascinating subject, this one. Uh, James uh, did want to stress that he's not an expert on New Zealand copyright law, that, in fact, his area of expertise and interest is English copyright law and American copyright law. Nonetheless, the Nets have to pay $600,000, or they now, as they're saying to the production company, hold on a sec, you pay it. It's really interesting. It's not as if they pinched, the production company pinched, they appropriated, they borrowed a song that wasn't well known. If you're not an Eminem fan, you need to know that lots of people are. It went to number one in Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, New Zealand. Yes, it went number one here. In fact, it went double platinum here. Norway, Swain, Sweden, Switzerland, UK, the United States, where it sold seven or eight million copies. It was a mega smash hit that the National Party's production company helped themselves to.